All right, uh, if you would please raise your right hand. Do you swear from tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Please have a seat, answer the questions of uh, Ms. Biggers, and then Mr. Uh, Foreman. Uh, name is Coakley Dean Sapp. I'm employed by the Kentucky State Police as a breath alcohol technician at uh, Central Forensics Laboratory in Frankfurt. Okay. And um, have you worked with the intoxilizer that was in February, or I'm sorry, in March and April at the Radcliffe Police Department? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to show you a couple documents right now. Could you identify these documents for me? Okay, this is a certified copy of my service record for the intoxilizer with record of the police department. So you do regular maintenance on these machines, correct? That's yes. statewide. Yes, I do. And uh, the, first, the first record there, is there a date on that record? Okay. And I'm sorry, which record are you referring to? I have the in order of dates, the two ones that have been introduced. <clears throat> Okay, that's fine. Proceed. Uh, the first one is dated March the 18th, 2015. Okay. Does it indicate on there why there are not records available for February for this machine? Um, I'm sorry? Is there a notation on those about why there are not February records for that machine? Uh, this instrument was just installed. This was the date that it was installed. And you were the one that installed it at yes. the Radcliffe Police Department, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, was it working properly, to your knowledge? Yes. Okay. Now, the following month, uh, did you return for another um, inspection to make sure it was still in proper working order? Uh, yes. We serviced them every 30 to 35, 40 days. Okay. Uh, the second record there, uh, can you tell me the date on that one? Uh, it's dated 4-20-2015. Uh, okay. And does it indicate that there were any problems off of the machine? Uh, no. Do you recall there being any problems that weren't noted? Uh, there, well, okay, let's see. Okay, my first test that I ran on this service was an ounce tolerance, and it was determined that the simulator, the motor on it was not properly operating, and so it's allowing, allowing it to overheat. So I. Okay, there were some minor adjustments that you made to ensure it was in prime working. Yes, I switched out the simulator on it and ran another test, and it was proper. So, but both times, both when you installed the machine, then when you went back to check, when the machine was placed at or at home, when you went back to check, the machine was placed at or I guess calibrated to optimum working levels. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'm going to introduce the records. Objection. Without objection, uh, entered into evidence as Commonwealth's Exhibit Three collectively the maintenance record reports. works when an individual is blowing into it. Now, we had discussed earlier that something about sometimes there's an insufficient sample error. How would that happen? Uh, that would occur if a subject blows into the instrument in, without sufficient volume, and he has up to three minutes, <clears throat> excuse me, up to three minutes to complete a breath test. If he doesn't provide sufficient volume in that three minutes, then it will it will flag it as a insufficient sample. Okay. So within three minutes, a person can blow more than once. Uh, does it? I mean, if a person blew just a little bit and it didn't say that it was an insufficient sample, is it okay to then blow into that machine again? It, and as long as he does it within three minutes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, if I could have one second just to. If there was an insufficient sample provided that somehow registered with the machine, um, I mean, if there was something in the tube that could affect the results of the breath test, would the machine tell us? If there was some, amp some air left in there from something else? I'm not really... Let me, let me ask that a yeah, different please way. Please rephrase it. Let me ask that a different way. If an individual blew for about half a second, as I think what our testimony was, about half a second and then stopped. 
blowing into that machine again to provide a larger sufficient sample, that first breath wouldn't impact the reading and make and change Judging it anyway from the second. No. I'm sorry, what? This is directly Certainly leading, so I'll, I'll, I'll uh, sustain I'll, I can the rephrase objection. it. I can rephrase it. Um, Said that there is a three-minute period to collect the sample. Yes. Okay. If anything happens during that three-minute period, um, would the machine tell us if something was off or happened incorrectly? It it wouldn't tell you if it was off. I mean, what it what it would do if you just blew into it and stopped. If you did not provide the sufficient volume, which it, it takes uh, 1.5 liters of air. To, to give you a proper sample. And uh, if you didn't provide that <clears throat> within three minutes, it would time out and it would print on the test ticket that insufficient sample. Okay, so that's how we get the insufficient sample. Mm -hmm. all right, thank you, Judge. That's all the questions are uh, Mr. Foreman. Thank you, Judge. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <clears throat> is your, so just so I'm clear, is your first name Dean or is... Well, that's my middle name. The first name is Coakley. Coakley. Yes. But you go by Dean. But I go by Dean. Do you mind if I call you Dean? That's great. <laughs> Dean, you said that you are familiar with the workings of a breathalyzer machine. Is that right? Yes, sir. How long have you been operating on breathalyzer machines? I've been employed with the state police for six years. With the state police for six years? Yes. Do you have a degree in chemistry or anything? I have sort? an associate's degree in electronics. I have 22 years uh, background in military electronics prior to that. What did you do in the military? I'm sorry? Oh, what did you do in the military? I'm sorry. Uh, photo reconnaissance. Photo What's reconnaissance. Reconnaissance. What was that like? Interesting. <laughs> but you've been working with intoxilizers for about six years now. Yes, sir. With KSP. Mm -hmm. Before an individual, or strike that, before a machine is ready to accept a sample from an individual, it has to be prepared, the machine itself, correct? Yes, sir. First, it's got to warm up, perform some internal checks before it even is ready to accept a sample. Yes. When it is ready to accept a sample, there is a certain procedure that the machine goes through. First, it will do a air blank. Yes, sir. And that is done to make sure that there is no alcohol molecules in the the hose of the machine. It's in the instrument, yes. Or internal. Yes. After it makes sure makes sure that there is no alcohol in the hose the first time, in the first air blank, it performs its own internal calibration check using the alcohol solution that is provided by the KSB lab in Frankfurt, I, I believe is the one yes, sir. for Hardin County. Is that right? Yes, sir. After the calibration check, since now we have alcohol in the machine, it performs another air blank. Yes, it does. And that's to clear out any excess alcohol from that calibration check. Yes. At that point, it is ready to accept a subject sample. Objection, that's not a question. Is it ready to accept a subject sample at that point? Yes. The machine tests for grams of alcohol per 210 liters of breath. That's the standard. Yes. And you testified that 
the machine accepts about 1.5 liters of breath for the sample. Yes, per volume. Per volume. But before it takes the sample, you have to supply it with 1.5 liters of air. Not 210. No. That would be almost humanly impossible, would it not? <laughs> So it tests the alcohol molecules on a very, very small molecular level. Is that right? I'm not a chemist. I couldn't testify to that. If an individual were to have any alcohol come up from the contents of their stomach, how would that affect the test? Well. If you, if you belched or something like that, uh, I mean, you would get the, the alcohol content that's in your stomach in, into the, to the breath. And it would affect the breath result, would it not? By elevating it? It could possibly, yes. No further questions. Uh, anything else of this witness? No, no. Is this witness subject to recall or may he be finally excused? That's fine, Judge.